Hey guys, let's take a look at a new type of uniform motion problems. And the reason they're called uniform motion is that they're setting up these problems where so-and-so goes X miles an hour the whole time and so-and-so goes X miles an hour. You know, that never happens in real life, but it's useful to set up a, a, a method of how to solve these kind of things. And this is called D sub one plus D sub two equals K, which we'll talk about with the meaning of that in just a couple of minutes. Okay, let's take a look at one. And again, if you need to draw a picture, draw a picture. If you need to uh, walk up to the computer screen uh, and sniff the screen, you know, if you're a nasal learner, feel free to do that. Just don't do it in, like, in public or anything at the library. They'll throw you out and stuff like that. So anyway, okay, let's look. Sue walked part of the 60 miles and flew the rest. Okay, well, let's visualize it. There's Sue. I mean, here's her, I don't know. I don't know how far she's going. There, she walked part of the 60 miles. So I don't know, she walked. There's her walking distance. And then she flew the rest, okay? Walking and then let's say flying. <clears throat> the entire thing is 60 miles. Yunk, and yunk. there we go. That good? Okay, you can draw something like that. She walked three miles an hour. She flew nine miles an hour. The total trip <clears throat> time was eight hours. How long did she walk? Well, you know the process of this, right? We need four equations. We need to figure out uh, you know, uh, one is a, a, ratio, a rate, one is a time, one is a distance, and the fourth one is, you know, whatever comes up in the little paragraph. Once you get those four, you just substitute in and solve it, and boom, there you go. Well, let's look at this first picture. Um, she's got a distance of walking. If you add that to the distance of flying, the thing totals 60 miles, okay? So you can write, if you want to, the distance of walking plus the distance of flying is 60. That's an F. Of course, remember, we don't use Ds. What's, the, what's distance the same as? What times what? Rate times time. So we can say rate of walking, time of walking, plus rate of flying, time of flying, equals 60. There's one equation, three left. She walked three miles an hour. Okay, piece of cake. So our rate of walking is three. She flew nine miles per hour. That's pretty slow flying. Sounds like some planes I've been on. The rate of, rate of flying is nine, okay? Now we've got a distance, we have rates, now we're missing a time. The total trip time was eight hours. Well, fine. Then the time of walking plus the time of flying is equal to eight. And there we go, we got it. Now all we need to do is take this big old honking equation on the left and throw a bunch of stuff into it and figure out what it is. So let's take a look. So the rate of walking, we figured out that was three. The time of walking, we don't uh, quite know yet. We'll just call it time of walking. Plus the rate of flying, we got it, it's nine. Now the time of flying, we can't stick in T sub F there. We can't solve an equation with two unknowns, not possible. So let's stick in something for T of F. <clears throat> let's solve for T of F. So over here, we're gonna go, okay, T of F, I'm gonna solve for it. So I go like that, and I yoink that uh, time of walking over here, so that becomes this. So T sub F, I'm just gonna erase this thing, I don't need it. T sub F is equal to eight minus T sub W. So there we go. That's what I'm gonna kind of plop in there. So instead of writing T sub F, I'll write eight minus T sub W, that equals 60, just like we got. Look at that equation. Can we solve it? Yes. All we have is T sub Ws. So let's keep going. Three times walking plus 72 uh, neg uh, plus nine times negative will be negative nine T sub W equals 60. Okay. So I got three. I got negative nine. That gives me negative six. And I'm going to yoink this 72 over here. 60 minus 72 is negative 12. So negative six times what is negative 12? And the answer is two. So Sue walked for two hours. If Sue walked, well, we just solved it, right? We're done. How long does she walk? Let's test it in 10 seconds. Um, if she walks three miles per hour for two uh, hours, that means she goes six miles walking, right? If she flies nine miles per hour, well, how long does she fly? Well, the answer is she did eight hours total. She walked for two, so she had to fly six hours. So six hours, she flew at nine miles per hour. Six times nine is 54. Add those two together. That gives you 60 miles. We got it.
try another one. All right, Gilbert and Sullivan were 54 miles apart. Sullivan began the journey to the meeting place, blah, blah, you know, forget that right now. Let's say they're 50 miles apart. And it, well, let's actually start re keep reading it here. Um, blah, 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 Gilbert ran to meet him if they met. Okay, meet means, here's Gilbert, right? Here he is. He's running, uh, doing this, okay? Sullivan is over here. And, you know, he's right there. And he, uh, he's running here, okay? Well, meet means they, you know, not necessarily clonk heads, but I mean, they got together. So they covered the 54 miles. In other words, this right here is 54. Now, don't assume that they both traveled half that. They could have, you know, traveled much, many different, you know, or two different uh, distances. So we'll figure out what those are. Okay, so right away, we can write an equation, right? If they're 54 miles apart, what does that mean? That means that the distance Gilbert ran plus the distance Sullivan ran is 54. We ain't using any D's, okay? We're using R's and uh, a T. So the rate of Gilbert, the time of Gilbert, do you know, it's like a six to me. Hold on, let me get rid of that, that G. Plus the rate of Sullivan, time of Sullivan equals 54. There we go, we got an equation. Sullivan began the journey to the meeting at 8 a.m. and blah, 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 okay, and at three miles per hour. So let's just do the three miles per hour part. So Sullivan's rate is three miles per hour. So the rate of good old Sully is three. That's two equations. All right, two hours later, Gilbert ran the meeting. They met at 4 p.m. Ah, there's our answer right there. They met at 4 p.m. Well, Sullivan started at 8 a.m. So the time of Sullivan was 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. How many hours is that? Eight, right? Gilbert, okay, excuse me, two hours later, Gilbert ran the meet him. That means the time of Gilbert is two hours less. That's six. Yoink, we got it. There's our far equation. So let's go ahead and just slop that stuff in there. All right, the rate of Gilbert, um, how fast did Gilbert run? Hmm, we don't know. So let's just say the rate of Gilbert is the rate of Gilbert. The time of Gilbert is six. All right, we'll just put it up front here, six times r sub g, plus the rate of Sullivan is three, the time of Sullivan is eight, so we can just multiply those together, three times eight is 24, and that equals 54. So six times the rate of Gilbert, and let's subtract 24 from 54, so the rate of Gilbert equals five. There we go, we got it, piece of cake, okay? Draw those pictures, those help, okay? Draw, draw a nice picture. I mean, you know, preferably of something that has to do with the problem, not like of a landscape or, you know, goats or something. But anyway, okay, that, that looks pretty good. All right, let's try the uh, third one here. This is a more practical one. At noon, Bilbo ran toward the towers and ran and ran and ran for four hours. And then two, four more hours, the second movie. And then four more hours, the third. Okay, sorry, I got off track there. Okay. Bilbo runs toward the towers. One hour later, <clears throat> Frodo ran the opposite way at a speed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then eventually they were 11,800 miles apart. Okay, so in other words, here's Bilbo. He runs toward the towers like this. Okay, and here are the towers. There they are. And the giant eyeball looking at them. Hey there. Okay, that's a terrible drawing. Okay. Uh, an hour later, Frodo ran the opposite way. So, boo, there's Frodo. Okay, he goes this way. I'll put F going that way. And then Bilbo's going that way. If they were 11,800 miles apart, okay, which means from here to here is 11,800 miles. That's about how long it seemed like they traveled when I saw those 86-hour movies. Okay, how fast did each travel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, anyway, we've got a distance equation we can do right from that drawing, right? So the distance of Frodo plus the distance of Bilbo is 11,800. It's actually 15,000 if you do the director's cut. Okay, but we'll stick with 11,800. Okay, so the distance of Frodo will go rate of Frodo, time of Frodo, plus the distance of Bilbo. So distance of Bilbo is rate of Bilbo, time of Bilbo, Together, that's going to be 11,800. All right, equation one is yoink out of there. Okay, um, let's see. At noon, 
they run, an hour later they, uh, he runs, and then uh, 5 p.m., ah, here's our times. So Bilbo goes from noon to 5 p.m. So the time of Bilbo is gonna be five hours. One hour later, that means Frodo's time, oops, that's a T sub F, that is horrific looking, I'm doing that over. Okay, see, those director's cut movies just, they toy with my head. All I can think of, Mr. Frodo, we still haven't gotten the ring to the volcano 86 hours later. Okay. All right, Frodo runs the opposite way at a speed 200 less than Bilbo. Okay, so let's figure this out. So the rate of Frodo is 200 less than Bilbo. So we got Bilbo, the rate of Bilbo minus 200. We don't know what either one of them is, yeah, we'll figure that out. Okay, there's our four equations. There we go. So let's just slop it in there. Okay, how about another color? How about purple? Okay, so rate of Frodo. Ah, look at this. We've got it. R sub B minus 200. And then the time of Frodo is 4. So let's put the 4 in front just so it's easier to distribute. So that's R sub B minus 200. Okay, plus the rate of Bilbo is, we don't know. The time of Bilbo is five. So we'll put five and the time of Bilbo. That whole thing equals 11,800. That good? You see what I just did there, substituting? Okay, now we can solve this because we just have one variable, the R sub B. So let's go ahead and stick that in there. Four times R sub B minus 200 times four is 800 plus five T. Wait a second, that's not right. Did I do that right? Five. Oh, that should be, oops, that's my bad. The rate of, that should be rate of Bilbo. Let me re, rewrite that. There we go. And that should be five times the rate of Bilbo. And of course, this will also be five times the rate of Bilbo equals 11,800. There we go. Okay, so I got four of this. Uh, I've got five of this. That gives me nine times the rate of Bilbo. And I'm going to take this and add 800 to 11,800. That's 12, 6. And then this is where I would use a calculator. So it looks like the rate of Bilbo, good grief. This is a heck of a lot of fast running here. The rate of Bilbo was 1,400. That is some, I'm, I'm telling you, the movie did not, they didn't go that fast. This movie would, would have been over in five minutes had they, had they gone that fast. Of course, they could have also just given the ring to some eagles or something, but I guess that the eye would have seen the eagles or whatever. Okay, anyway. So the rate of Bilbo was that. Then they asked how fast did each one travel? Okay, well then the rate of Frodo is gonna be the rate of Bilbo, which is 1400 minus 200. So that'll be 1400 minus 200, which is 1200. So there we go, okay. <sighs> Mr. Frodo. Okay, all right, good enough. All right, give the uh, practice problem a whirl. Go ahead and pause it and see what you get. Draw a picture. Draw a picture if you need to. Okay, well, here's the picture. Chester left the roundup and began the 66-mile trip to Dodge City. So there's Chester, okay, and way over here, he's going over here to Dodge City. Okay, Marshall Dillon left Dodge City to meet Chester. All right, well, I mean, you know, so in other words, they, they meet somewhere right there. So there's Marshall Dillon, call him MD. Well, we know from uh, the roundup to Dodge City is 66 miles, right? From there to there, that's a six. So Chester didn't quite make it, but you know, they met each other. So their distances equal 66 mile total. So let's go ahead and write that. So Chester, and look, we'll call him Marshall. So the distance of Chester plus the dis distance of Marshall equals 66. There's equation one. Okay, so at 1 p.m. Chester leaves. Okay, at 2 p.m. Marshall Dillon leaves, blah, blah, blah. They met at 9 p.m. Okay, that's good. So from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., that's Chester. So the time of Chester is from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. At 2 p.m., there's Marshall Dillon, so the time of Marshall is going to be 7. All right, Marshall Dillon's speed was twice that of Chester. Okay, well, let's see, the rate of Marshall is gonna be twice Chester's, so that'll be two times the rate of Chester's. How's that look? Is that okay? Okay, let's start slopping stuff in here. 
All right, the rate of Chester, we don't know. I'm just gonna put rate of Chester. The time of Chester, there's my eight. I'm gonna stick this in the front so it's easier to look at. Okay, the rate of Marshall Dillon, ooh, we got something good here. That's gonna be twice here. Let me take with the time of Marshall was seven. So I'm gonna put seven times two R sub C. You know what, let's just go ahead. We know what two times seven is, that's, that's easy enough. Let's just go ahead and write uh, 14 R sub C, that equals 66. Okay, well eight plus 14 is 22. So the rate of Chester is 66 divided by 22, which is three, there we go. How far did each man ride? Ooh, we haven't answered the question, have we? All right, if Chester's going three miles an hour, and how long does he go? He goes eight hours. Well, that means Chester, the distance Chester goes is 24 miles. That makes sense? If he's going three miles an hour, he goes from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's eight hours, eight times three, 24. Let's figure out how much the marshal should. By the way, the marshal should be going 66 minus 24. Or 42 because you know that's the, the rest the rest of the distance to meet Chester okay so how far to each man let's just test it the distance uh, of Marshall Dillon well Marshall Dillon his speed was twice that of Chester's Chester's was three so Marshall Dillon's speed was six how far I mean how long does Marshall Dillon go from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. that's seven hours seven hours at six miles an hour that's 42 miles he rides, plus 24 gives you 66. Boom, we got it, we are right, okay. All right, you guys have a great day and we'll uh, talk at you next time, take care.